What's up y'all, Quentin here with Catfish Karma and today's video is about fishing with Pam cooking spray versus WD-40 for catching loads of fish. We'll compare these two products, we'll catch some fish, we'll have a good time. Let's do this. y'all check it out as i mentioned in the intro today we are shooting another fishing challenge it's pam cooking spray versus wd-40 i haven't even got my rod in the water yet and victoria is hooked up on a fish we haven't started with wd-40 that's going to be a pam fish assuming she gets it in all right what do you think baby how big is it it's it's, it's not pretty, small pretty good fish it's not small. good deal i mean literally she's been bumping uh 30 how 30 seconds. 30 seconds she says <laughs> 30 seconds so that's cool we spent the first i don't know 30 minutes this morning catching a little bit of bait and she put a shot of pam on there we i mean we didn't even marinate it we just sprayed the sprayed the pam on there and uh she got her good fight going what are you heavy breathing for? You sound like you're in Lamaze class or something. <laughs> it's it's All right, let me get. Been in class, but... I'm gonna get the net. Oh yeah. Oh. Ooh, that's a good way to start the day. No. The big old male. First fish on pan. All right, y'all, check it out. We've already removed the hook from this fish. It stayed in the water the whole time. It's got water running over its gills. We're gonna get the scale ready. We've already got the camera ready. We'll be able to weigh this fish before we ever take it out of the net, get a quick picture of it, and get it right back in the water. And that's the way you handle these big catfish, to make the least impact possible. As you can see, I took the handle off the net. That makes it easier to weigh. Victoria wants to see if she can lift this one in here on her own probably around 40 or so I'd say good job higher a little shorty all right we'll get a quick weight on it real quick while the fish is still in the net Victoria guessed 43 I guessed 42 it says just over 44 net weighs about two to two and a half pounds so we were both close all right babe Show that fish to him. Oh, and it's pooing on you. You're going to smell that all day. <laughs> Just like that, y'all. First fish of the day on Pam. About 42 pounds. We're going to get another one and really get going on this fishing challenge. Let her go, babe. All right, so... As I'm sure at least some of you are aware, the last video that I put out was titled Fishermen are catching loads of fish using Pam cooking spray. Sort of a gimmicky, or at least what I would call a gimmicky little bait video. And that's definitely not what my channel has been known for. But it's the most successful video that my channel has ever had as far as the most views in the least amount of time. Uh, it's on track to do a million views uh, in pretty short order and for my channel that's pretty strong so when I started getting so many comments about uh, other fish attractants you know kind of made me want to answer some of those uh, those comments and those requests but by far the most frequent comment uh, or topic of comments that I got was about WD-40 I, I mean, hun literally hundreds of comments about I should have used WD-40 or I should use WD-40 or so-and-so and their grandpa used WD-40. Now, I mentioned the WD-40 thing. I mean, that's, that's not new news, right? People have tried WD-40 forever, I guess. And I mentioned that in the last video, but I also mentioned some of the reasons why I don't use or, or didn't use WD-40. And we're going to get to that because the first part of this challenge is we're going to look at the ingredients of both WD-40 and PAM because uh, that's an important criteria, right? If you're going to decide which one of these might be the best way to go, 
uh, I think that's a good starting point. But first, I want to get a chance to get a fish in the boat because I'm a little jealous. She started off with a 42 pounder. So what we're doing today, guys, is we're, we're drifting. If you're new to the channel, maybe you've never seen it before, but, um, and you might not be able to tell, but the boat's actually moving. Uh, we're moving at about half a mile per hour. That'll pick up as we go down through here. Uh, we're using the trolling motor to slow the boat down, but we're in like a two and a half mile an hour current, something like that. And the trolling motor's slowing us down and we're, we're just using, you know, these two rods. We haven't got anything casted out. Just these rods here in our hand. And we're, we're picking these baits up, letting them bump bottom, picking them up, letting them up bottom, all the way down through here. And uh, we'll run into a few fish in the process. So that's what we're doing today. That's what we'll be doing all day today. Uh, but yeah, give us a few minutes. Let's get another fish going. And then we're gonna check out the ingredients. That's the first criteria of this fishing challenge or, or test or experiment or whatever we're calling it. Yeah, you get a fish. <laughs> what can I say, folks? She's hooked up again. I'm coming your way. It's been about three minutes, something like that. <sighs> She's not going to give me much of a chance today, apparently. No. Any head shakes? Uh, I can't tell yet. I'm going to move the camera. So while she's fighting this fish, I'll give you the skinny on the conditions today. Uh, it's late September, still pretty early in the day. Well, in fact, it's barely eight o'clock. And uh, it's cool, it was like 50 something degrees this morning. And uh, kind of like 50 feet of water, two and a half mile an hour current, water temps in the high 70s. Okay, fish number three. All on Pam so far. Ooh. Whoa, you trying to get me? <laughs> I kind of respect that game. That's fish number two and three right there. All right, so I told you guys that once we got another fish in the boat, we were gonna really get going on this challenge and we are. So here we go. We gotta start this fishing challenge with the ingredients. And ingredient number one on Pam cooking spray is canola oil. I'm gonna put this on the screen and I'm sure some of the different flavors of Pam are different, but in this case, canola oil. Not only is Pam cooking spray safe for human consumption, but I'll bet 99.9% .9 of you watching this consume canola oil basically on a probably like a daily basis. There are warnings on there about the flammability of Pam, but that comes from the uh, aerosol propellant. Neither one of us smoke. I've never seen a catfish smoking, so I don't see that being an issue today. And those same flammability war warnings are on WD 40 because it also has propellant, although there's a lot more about flammability on this than there is in Pam. But let's talk about ingredient number one here because really I just don't feel right about doing this challenge without knowing what's in both of these. And like I said, I touched on that in the first Fishing with Pam video. Still got hundreds of comments about I should be using WD-40. Hidden in fine print. They don't even give you an ingredients list, but after you get through multiple warnings about harmful or fatal if if you breathe it or if you swallow it, and by multiple I mean like there's five or six warnings on here about that, before you get to a part where it says contains 
petroleum distillates. Now, I don't know exactly what a distillate is, <laughs> but a quick Google search would tell all of us. But I know it starts with petroleum and this starts with canola oil. So that, that's ingredient number one on both of those two. And we're gonna get to the next ingredients once we catch another fish. All right, so while we're waiting on this next bite, I'm gonna to touch on a hot topic, so to speak, from the first Fishing with Pam cooking spray video. I had lots of people comment about this. I showed in that first video, just like I did this one, how we were applying the Pam to our baits. And I got a lot of comments saying that the experiment proved nothing because I was spraying the Pam on a bait that catfish already eat. Some people were helpful. They suggested that I spray it on a sponge or spray it on a towel. Some people suggested that I spray it on a tampon. Lots of comments. Some of them helpful. Some of them were just rude. Some of them were just haterade. But what it really came down to is a lot of those people didn't make it to the end of the video apparently because in stage three of that video, the third and final uh, testing parameter, so to speak, we sprayed Pam on just pieces of these these towels that I use to clean my hands on. Just a cotton towel, nothing else on it but Pam cooking spray, and we still caught fish. So that was me trying to be thorough in the test. It's in the video. I encourage you to go back and watch that whole video about fishing with Pam cooking spray if you didn't make it to the end. All that said, I'm not suggesting that you got to use Pam cooking spray to catch fish. I mean, there's a reason we spent the time to catch fresh bait this morning. That's always best. Fresh is always best. But my goal in the video was, number one, let's get some views. People like gimmicky bait videos. But also, by proving that the Pam worked on something as simple as a towel, I think it will help people. You can't always get fresh bait. You got a day where, you know, all you got is some old stale frozen stuff or some chicken or, you know, maybe a, a non-fatty fish that you caught in a cast net. You can use that Pam to sauce it up a little bit and make it a little bit more enticing for your fish and maybe have a more successful day. Here we go, y'all. For those of you that might follow some of my uh, rod building videos or just follow me on uh, Facebook or Instagram, this is the world's lightest purpose-built catfish bouncing, back bouncing rod that I've posted about a few times. It's on the uh, Rain Shadow RX-10 blank. Uh, I believe, I'll have to go back and check, but I think the biggest that I've caught on this so far was uh, 46 to 48 pounds. Which, considering that the blank itself is like 2.4 ounces, uh, that's pretty phenomenal to be able to catch a fish like that. It's the RX-10 blank. It's been pretty awesome so far. I'd have to say it's got the highest power to weight ratio of anything I've ever used. Check it out, y'all. By far one of... Woo! He's pooing. He's pooing. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's a pooing everywhere. By far one of the nastiest <laughs> fish. You know, some of these, whew, some of these blues are gorgeous. This isn't one of them, but check it out. He's completely blind. I don't know how well you guys can see his eyeballs. Whew, that poo is, that is unfortunate. <laughs> Let me clean my boat up and we're gonna get back to the ingredients <laughs> on those products. Oh shoot. Ugh. <laughs> All right y'all, so we came back up to the top of this drift. We've got our baits in the water and it's time to get deeper into this, uh, this challenge here, this ingredients list. So we're gonna look at Pam cooking spray again. I'm gonna give you two ingredients instead of one this time. After Canola oil, it's coconut oil, which happens to be good for you, by the way. Uh, after coconut oil, it's palm oil. 
She said that's also good for you. I couldn't tell you. I don't know if I've ever had it besides in pan cooking spray. You know what? The heck with it. I'll give you another one. Soy lectin. I don't know exactly what that is, but it's soy. All things that we consume on a daily basis. But when you get back over here to the WD-40 and you get past all the warnings about flammability and uh, dying if you inhale this, of which there are many, get down all the fine print there. Contra contains the petroleum distillates that we spoke of earlier. And after that, guess what? Right back to harmful or fatal if swallowed. There are no other ingredients besides petroleum distillates listed on the can. But when I was doing my homework before this video, I got on the internet and I tried to find a more detailed list of ingredients. And I struck out. I even went as far as to uh, look up the MSDS sheet for WD-40. That said, a lot of the people commenting in the first Fishing with Pam cooking spray video kept telling me that WD-40 was made from fish oil. You won't find fish oil listed anywhere on this can. You won't find it listed on the internet. You won't find it listed in the MSDS sheet, at least not the things that I was able to find when I looked it all up. Victoria mentioned earlier, though, that if you want to fish with fish oil, you can buy that. You can buy it for humans and for pets. There again, I'm not saying you have to have Pam to catch fish, but I proved in the first video that not only does it not deter fish, but you can catch a lot of fish on it. And even spraying it on a rag, you can still catch fish. These fish that we're targeting, they're in deep water, they're in stained water. They're not feeding on sight. They're feeding on taste and smell. That trail that's going down through the water that's coming off our baits and coming from that pan. That said, we're going to put another fish in the boat and uh, I guess try to wrap up this challenge. All right, y'all, check it out. Since the last time the camera was on, we went about 30 minutes or so with no bites whatsoever so we made a run down river to get some more bait uh, we took some time to let the dogs play on a sandbar we had a little lunch and then we made another run down river but here we are we're set up on another drift and uh, we're going to try to finish this video with some action all right y'all check it out I'm, I'm picking up on a pattern for the day, and that is that Victoria is kicking my butt in this fishing challenge. Pam, cooking spray versus WD-40. She is just running away with this one. No, he's running away with this one. Yeah, the fish is running away with it. <laughs> just, we, we got us a good one on here, guys. Uh, I know you guys tuned in to see Pam versus WD-40, and in a way you are getting to see it because the way we look at it, uh, if all WD-40 has in it is petroleum products, it's not something that we're going to consider a fish attractant. It's not something that we're going to spray on bait and put in the water uh, when we can spray something that's mostly, you know, just, just natural oils um, that uh, I think is pretty environmentally friendly. We're certainly not environmentalists. Don't get it twisted, but... I don't see a reason to put WD-40 in the water. I think that's six or seven on Pam today. Pam cooking spray for catching loads of catfish. <laughs> in the first video, fishermen are catching loads of fish on Pam cooking spray. We caught mostly smaller fish. I think we did catch one around 40 or so. But today we're showing that it'll you know, catch all sizes. Okay, show me the fish, champ. There you go, folks. This was our version of Pam cooking spray versus WD-40 for catching loads of catfish. <laughs> Thanks for watching, folks.